Like a lot of the menus in the sidebar in VS Code, the File Explorer is a crutch. You can actually get away without using the File Explorer at all, and it will save you time and increase your efficiency as a developer if you use these tips and maybe a couple of extensions that I can recommend. So the number one thing that I have to recommend is a shortcut that I use every single day on VS Code, and that's a shortcut to be able to open a file. So a lot of people will open up the sidebar, they'll come and look for the file they want, and they'll click on this, or they'll double click it. There's a setting, I forget what it is, I'll come back and, and let you know. There's like a soft open, which I never do, so I make sure to open these like double click, but I've got the setting turned off, so that's a, that's a side story. So you open up a file, okay, great, this thing is open, uh, but you're losing all of this space up here, and it's not near as fast to go through and scroll and open uh, folders and all that kind of stuff. So it's much easier to use on Mac. It's Command P. On Windows, it's Control P. And this is basically a search to open a file. Now, the cool thing about this is it shows you files that uh, have recently been opened. So they're kind of in a priority order in here. So at the very least, if it's something I've opened recently, I can come and just scroll down and press footer. Okay, great. But the real power of this is let's say I want to open the link card list. I can now type in here and get to exactly the file that I want. Now you may be thinking when I get to bigger projects and I don't necessarily know what things are named, you probably know more of that than you expect. Or if you're naming your files in a way that makes sense, it should be pretty intuitive. So I always recommend and always do this myself. I basically 99% of the time open files through the search window and then give the name of the file. If I wanna open the blog file, I can do that. Very simple, super, super quick. And this is by far to me the fastest way to open a file in VS Code. Now, there's obviously other things that you can do inside of a file explorer, like CRUD operations for files, create a file, update a file, delete a file, etc. So one of the things that I have done is installed a, an extension called File Utils. I highly recommend you do this. And it basically gives you utilities for working with files as you would probably expect. So I guess there's another one like similarly named and icon. So make sure you choose the one by Stefan Leistner, Lesner. And inside of here, uh, you can kind of see what all it does, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of what it does. So it gives you commands in here. Uh, so this is another important shortcut to know is the uh, Command Shift P on Mac or Control Shift P on Windows is the ability to open up the command palette. And from here, you can type in any command that you want to. All of these commands are gonna be prefixed with the name of the extension. So if it's commands that come from an extension, you can search for the extension first, in this case, File Utils, and now I have access to my CRUD operations to delete, duplicate, rename, move, uh, copy name, and then create some new files. I'll come back to new files in a second because I've got an even better way to do this. So that's really cool. I now don't have to go all the way over here to right click and delete or to rename or whatever. So inside of command palette, I uh, search rename for example. So I do command shift P on Mac, rename, enter, rename the file, enter, that's already done. Uh, I didn't actually change the name, so it doesn't like that. Same thing for delete. So if I wanna delete this file, file utils delete, uh, move, et cetera, super, super fast. Now I mentioned that I had something different for creating a new file. Now creating a new file by default inside of VS Code, if you use Command N on Mac or Control N on Windows, it basically generates a new file with nothing in it, and then it uh, doesn't actually save it anywhere. So you have to then go to save, give it a name, blah, 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 which is like fairly inconvenient. So even if you know that shortcut, it's not the, the best way to do it in my mind. So inside of here, I also have an advanced new file extension. So if you search advanced new file, this is the one from Pat Benatar. It's relatively simple, but what it does is gives you a command to create a new file that's really, really powerful. So if I were to search advanced new file inside of the command prompt, you can see that pops up. I'll talk about shortcuts in a second. And so inside of here, the first thing it gives you is where do you want to create this file? And it shows you your recent selections of folders. So I've been working in the utils directory, data directory, data talks directory, the workspace root, et cetera. I could just type in like slash source. This is really, really cool because it gives me IntelliSense on all of these folders and I can just go down and select the one that I want. So if I were to do like slash, for example, I say, all right, in the workspace root, and then now it's asking me for the name of the file and I can say test.js, this will create this file. So that's really cool. Show you another shortcut that we just talked about is now I wanna get rid of this. So command shift P for command palette on Mac, control shift P on Windows, 
Now search delete, that file is gone, great. Now the other thing that we can do is we can do advanced new file. We could spell out the directory. So if we wanted to go into source and then something, we could also, I believe this will work if we say just in slash and then we want it to be in a folder called slash and then test.js. Uh, this should create this inside of a test directory. So you can do this like going down the chain of uh, folders typed in. Now you don't really need to do that in this case because advanced new file starts with the ability to do that. Um, actually, now that I'm doing this, I don't know if I have a shortcut for deleting a folder. That could be interesting. So that may be one thing like in the 1% of times I need to use the file explorer. Anyway, I'll go ahead and delete that. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is I customize the shortcut for, um, let's open up the shortcut. So I customize shortcut for new file. So if we look in here on Mac, it's command N, and this is going to trigger the advanced new file command. So that extension that I just talked about, this shortcut now is overriding the VS code default. So the don't wanna use the default stuff, I wanna use this one specifically. And also a really neat thing that I did here is I said I added a when condition. These are crazy powerful because you can define when your commands work based on the context of what you're doing in the editor. So this is saying I want this command to do this thing, trigger this or this shortcut to trigger this command when I'm not currently focused in the terminal. Why would I do that? Well, if we look at the terminal new, like new terminal, I forget exactly what it's called, open new terminal, I have the same command set up while I'm inside of terminal focus to con to create a new terminal window. But clarn is not a thing, uh, clear. So if I were to do command N inside of the context of the terminal that just created this second, um, this second terminal, actually I created multiple, but you can see I can do command N and you see this thing increasing over here. So those are all my terminal tabs. I also have set up to do command W in here. So, but it only works in the context of the terminal because now I can work with my terminal windows just like I do my windows over here. So I can tab through these. If I create another one, I can tab through these just like I would my files inside of here and I can command W to close, command N to create another one, et cetera. So it's a completely seamless integration or like workflow from terminal to text based on the context of where I am anyway. Uh, that is my bit on the Explorer window being a crutch for you inside of VS Code. There's much better ways. There's much more efficient, faster ways. So hopefully some of these tips are helpful. If you're interested in more of how to customize VS Code, I've got a free cheat sheet that will give you some of the tips and tricks and extensions and things that I use. So I'll put a link to the free cheat sheet in the description below that you can go and check out as well. If you have any other questions or topics you'd like to see me cover on VS Code, let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and uh, queue those up to help you make the most out of your experience inside of VS Code. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.